So now that we've extensively looked at how helper T cells are involved in the initial recognition and then later activation of humoral and cell mediated responses, let's focus on the cell mediated side of adaptive immunity. This is all going to be about activating and utilizing what are known as cytotoxic T cells. And that's the title of our next flowchart. Cytotoxic T cells are going to now abbreviated, uh, be abbreviated by T sub C. So T sub H is for helper T cells. Cytotoxic T cells are T sub C. This is all going to be summarized, their effect and action on figure 43.17. This really shows you the killing action of a cytotoxic T cell. And that's the correct word to use here. Cytotoxic T cells are killers. They're very, very good at killing infected cells. So let's take a look, generally speaking, at what they do. So cytotoxic T cells, T sub C, their job is to use toxic proteins. So they use toxic proteins to kill cells, your own cells, that are already infected. To kill cells already infected, they are, these cells are beyond saving. There's no point in trying to even save them. They're already infected um, by viruses or other intracellular pathogens. So we'll write that down. Usually it's viruses. That's usually what T cells, uh, T cytotoxic cells are really good for. Um, but it could also be other intracellular pathogens as well. So we'll write that down. Intracellular pathogens. So that means that these are pathogens that have infected the inside of a cell, like viruses. If you remember, they have that very good uh, ability to uh, bind to and enter within a cell. So do other intracellular pathogens. They get so far into their growth that these cells are already well infected, and now we have to figure out what to do with them. And the only thing you can do when a cell is already well infected by a virus or an intracellular pathogen is to kill them. And who does that? Cytotoxic T cells do that. Now you might be wondering, well why would you want to kill your own cells? I understand that they're infected by viruses or intracellular pathogens, but it just doesn't sound right. Why would you want to kill your own cells? The purpose of this is to basically help the cells around that already infected cell. Because when a cytotoxic T cell kills an already infected cell, this ensures that whatever and whoever the pathogen is, it ensures that the pathogen can't mature any further. Basically, it stops the life cycle of a pathogen right when it's trying to create a, a strong effect throughout the body. It basically makes sure and stops the spread of this pathogen. Because if you stop the maturity or any point of the life cycle of a pathogen, you're stopping its overall spread throughout the body. So basically this is picking your time at, at which you want to kill things that even though they're self cells, they're your own cells, it's important to recognize that there's a point at which there's, it's beyond saving. It's better to just kill them so that they cannot spread any further, the pathogen itself. Because you, as we know, viruses, what they like to do is they like to lice open cells and go in and infect even more cells. Why not just kill the cell altogether to make sure that that doesn't happen? Let's take a look at how that occurs within cytotoxic T cells. So these are going to uh, need activation. They don't just randomly kill cells left and right. They very specifically need to be activated. So there's going to be cytotoxic T cell activation. That's worth understanding because there are going to be many different steps to ensure that, to turn on basically a cytotoxic T cell because it's a very powerful process that they utilize. So one of the things that they utilize are helper T cell signals. So helper T cells as a sort of middleman between both the humoral and adaptive response, a humoral and cell mediated response, they will send certain signals, usually in the form of cytokines that activate, help, uh, that activate cytotoxic T cells, but also, in addition, this is a separate activation form, there are also going to be antigen presenting cell interactions. Some cytotoxic T cells have this capability, a lot of them, most of them, have this capability of going to an antigen presenting cell and getting activated on their own without the signal from a helper T cell. Don't get me wrong, what really happens is basically both of these simultaneously ensure a full-fledged activation, but we also have separate 
antigen presenting cell active interactions that cause a cytotoxic T cell to be activated. Let's take a look at these interactions in a little bit more detail. So what we have is the following. We have an, an infected host cell, right? Something beyond saving. So it's an infected HC, and what it will do, it, it will tell the immune cells that are without the body, within the body, hey, I'm infected, I know this is, you know, a, a tough decision, but I have to die. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what's infecting me, and you figure out what to do from that point forward. So the infected host cell, in other words, displays antigen fragments. This is how the immune system works, showing antigen fragments to the rest of the immune cells on a different, uh, a different protein, a different molecule called MHC class 1. Keep this in mind right now. This is not MHC class 2 because right now this is an infected cell. This may not necessarily be an antigen presenting cell. This could be any cell, a heart cell, a brain cell, whatever cell it may be because all cells contain MHC1. MHC1 is just an innate part of every cell that allows it to basically show a red flag to cytotoxic T cells saying, hey, I'm infected, you got to get rid of whatever's in me, so just kill me already. So let's see what happens here. So once this is displayed specifically on the cell surface, because that's the only way a cytotoxic T cell can know that something's infecting a whole cell, so you have this displaying of antigen fragment on MHC1 on that cell surface, you're going to get a recognition by cytotoxic T cell. So this is going to cause recognition by cytotoxic T cell binding. But guess what? The binding is very specific. This recognition is very, very specific, and it also involves two parts, much like the helper T cell binding involved two parts between APC and helper T cell. Same thing here. There are going to be two parts that are very similar. Number one, you need to have the antigen receptor found on the T cell, otherwise known as a TCR, successfully bind to the antigen fragment. So we'll write this down. The TCR binds to that displayed antigen fragment of an infected cell that's on which molecule? The antigen fragment isn't just floating around. This is an infected cell, a heart cell, let's say. That antigen fragment has to be displayed on and within an MHC class 1 molecule. That is the molecule that a cytotoxic T cell can read and recognize and bind to with its T cell receptor to figure out if this antigen fragment is worthy of killing the entire host cell. So we have that first initial binding between TCR and MHC1, which is carrying an antigen fragment. Now, the second one is known as CD8, not CD4, CD8. This is also an accessory protein found on the T cell surface. But which T cell now? Only cytotoxic T cells. Accessory protein on cytotoxic T cell surface. So CD8, as an accessory protein, also binds to MHC class 1, and only MHC class 1. So it also binds to MHC class 1. This is sort of another in mechanism to ensure that this is a full and proper binding, because this, just like that CD4 plus MHC2 combination we previously saw in helper T cell activation, in cytotoxic T cell activation, you have MHC1 plus CD8 making sure that this antigen presenting cell, because it's technically still an antigen presenting cell, even though it may be a heart cell, whatever cell, it's still presenting an antigen. It keeps that APC plus that cytotoxic T cell bound tightly together to make sure that this, is, this interaction successfully activates a, a cytotoxic T cell. Now, once you have this, TCR plus MHC1, CD8 plus MHC1, cytotoxic T cell is activated. This is now the time in which the cytotoxic T cell knows that it has to kill an infected host cell. And how does it do that? Let's take a look. Upon cytotoxic T cell activation, the activated cytotoxic T cell, T sub C, releases two very 
very toxic proteins, as stated previously. They are the following. Perforin is the first protein, or one of the proteins. They both release simultaneously. Perforin is a structure, a protein that directly forms pores. It forms pores, openings, in the infected cell's membrane. So we'll write that down. In infected cells plasma membrane. Remember what I said. If you ever want to kill a cell in immunity or in immunology when you're fighting a pathogen, if you ever want to kill that pathogen or kill a cell at all, always attack the plasma membrane. Because if you can cause havoc at the plasma membrane, everything will just sort of spew out and fall out. Because this is what maintains the integrity of the entire cell. You're creating holes in the plasma membrane with perforin. And what you're also going to do simultaneously is convince the cell to commit suicide with granzymes. What does that mean? Granzymes are going to be toxic proteins that enter, they go into the infected cell. They're released by the cytotoxic T cell. They go into the infected cell via a process known as endocytosis. So the infected cell takes up granzymes that are released by the cytotoxic T cell. And what this causes, it induces a very important process known as apoptosis. Apoptosis, a very fun term to say. Many people know what it is. This is programmed cell death. Programmed cell death. I think it's a, an amazing process that occurs. Programmed cell death. This is due to the activation. This is due to the activation of self-breakdown enzymes. What does that mean? So this is a very, very unique process that occurs here. The cytotoxic T cell, yes, it causes these pores to form, but it also releases these granzymes that are basically messages that tell the infected cell, hey, you are well beyond saving. You need to turn on your own what are called self-breakdown enzymes and kill yourself from the inside. You need to kill yourself in a programmed cell death called apoptosis so that there can be no more possible further uh, spread of the infection, infectious agent, whatever it may be. And in order to really make sure you kill yourself, I'm going to push you a little forward by creating these holes in your plasma membrane. These self-breakdown enzymes are so strong and so powerful that you might be wondering, hey, if you're making holes in the plasma membrane, aren't you letting the pathogen just out? No, you're not because these self-breakdown enzymes are so, so strong and powerful that they kill anything within the cell. Everything within the cell just basically dies and then the cell itself sort of proliferate, it sort of dies on its own as well because of the perforin. Overall, we get the following. End result. Sad result, but necessary result nonetheless. The infected cell dies. It dies. It's well beyond saving you. There's nothing you can do about it. And this is important because this stops the spread of this pathogen. Now, importantly, this cytotoxic T cell is actually, which was once connected via this really strong connection of TCR to MHC1, CD8 to MHC1. That cytotoxic T cell says, okay, you died. I'm just going to leave now. It's released. And it's actually ready to attack another cell. It is a very, very uh, very, very smart killer. It's ready to attack uh, another infected cell. It does not have any emotions. I like to think of it like that. It does not care that it just caused the self-death and perforation of a own immune, your own host cell. It just goes on to another infected cell and kills it. So be aware that cytotoxic T cells don't just kill one cell. They can kill many cells. That's usually the case because when it's activated, it's killing a cell that's infected and chances are the cell next to that cell is also infected. So it goes kill, 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 moves down the line basically. That covers our look at cytotoxic T cells. Be sure to look at figure 43.17 to see a visual representation of how this killing action takes place. Next, we're going to shift gears and look at B cells and how humoral responses work.